Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another segment of Hollywood Memories. This is going to be a very special segment, and for that, I get to introduce uh, Beverly Washburn, my favorite columnist. So go ahead and do it. Thank you for saying that, Dan. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. And for those of you who have been keeping up with us, you'll remember our special guest today, Jeannie Russell, who was Margaret on the Dennis the Menace show. And we've had such a good response, so many nice emails that we decided to invite you back. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm just grateful I'm back. So you have no <laughs> idea. Jeannie, if I may, when we spoke last time, you talked about your life as Margaret. Yes. And yet, Margaret was just a small part of everything you've done. And you've had to recreate yourself, which, again, I've told you off camera. It's just fascinating. What happened to the little girl, Margaret, that made you have to recreate yourself? Well, um, I had a bad experience with a nasty casting director. I won't math, um, <laughs> mention his name. But the door slammed shut on professional show business for me at a point, okay? And that was about how old were you? I was 13 okay. at the time. And I maybe did one or two other things. And then it just, it was just over. I was in a no man's land and depressed. And in my home, we all had a work ethic. And doing nothing was not an option. So um, after I graduated from high school, I... Um, slept walked through Valley College and got my AA. And um, I was selling tickets at the time to keep busy. It, it was a good gig. I was at the Music Center, mm -hmm. Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. And um, we were assistant treasurers. And very wealthy patrons used to buy season tickets. And one day, um, a very belligerent customer was trying to exchange her tickets and didn't understand why she couldn't have the same seats on another night. And I said, well, because someone else is sitting in them. And I turned around to, to find something possibly comparable. And she announces to the whole line, they got to get the stupid ones to do this. That's horrible. And that, <laughs> that clicked. Okay. That, that set my ignition. So I decided I need a career again, and I need a career that I can control. And my mother had saved a significant amount of my money, you know, uh, for those days, even though she didn't have to, I found out later. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, honey, your career in show business may be open, over, but look what it did for you. And she handed me my bank account. And I thought, OK, ball's in my court now. What am I going to do? And I finally decided that um, starting over again was just untenable. I mean, it was new kids, you know, casting things and no one appreciated the work a child actor did. And nor could I, the script union, we didn't want anything to do with me. The extras didn't. So I decided, okay, it's on me. And I'd had a lot of dance training and I wanted a job I could control. And um, chiropractic, I'd had, I'd been treated as a child and it turned my health around at, at at that time, and and I looked into it, and it was wide open for women, and all you needed to do was get your diploma, pass a board, and you could set up shop. This is what I'm going to do. It's a lot, a lot harder than what that is, but yeah. yeah. But she called me stupid. Yeah. Watch, <laughs> you know, so. I, But let me ask you. I mean, the thing that that I, I find just unbelievable is mm -hmm. that a 12 year old girl, 13 year old girl, again, you were nationally known as Margaret, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they just shut the door. And I, again, you've had ups and downs like that, too. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you handled the rejection as a 12 year old. It was incredibly depressing. And I felt like a fish out of water just going back to normal school. And I'd, I'd have maybe one best friend. But I just I did not know how to live life off of a soundstage. And I was later to hear Dana Plato say the same thing on the Suzanne Summer show when Suzanne called her in and said, what happened? And she said, I, I did not know how to behave or what to do off of a lot. And you, you know? all, you know who Dana Plato was. That, uh, what was, she was on a series, I um, um, can't remember the name of it, but she was very well known. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then she got sort of messed up and she 
robbed in stores. You, yeah, she, she yeah, committed yeah. a crime. Uh -huh. Got arrested. Yeah, very so. well known. Todd Burgess was on it, and um, Facts of Life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So, but she was on it again. You mentioned previously about Rusty Hammer. Rusty Hammer was on the Danny Thomas yeah. show, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was. And he wound up being a cook in Louisiana, living in a trailer, and one day he blew his brains out. Mm -hmm. And so now, this was the age of the talk shows, Geraldo, right. Sally, Jesse, Raphael. So here I am, I've reinvented myself, I'm a chiropractor, and one of my patients is a, a publicist for at Universal, and he said, you know, a friend of mine is out here from New York, Bobby Rivers, and they're doing a segment on where are they now, you know, I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah. We, and they've got, they've booked Jay and the producers. Jay North. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. Who was Dennis. Who yeah. I hadn't seen in decades. And they booked Jay and he is really a mess. Would you be interested? I'll pitch it to her. You want to do the show with him? And I said, yes. It's like a little vampire waking right, yeah. up, you know. And so I did the Bobby Rivers show and I hooked up with Paul, who was also doing a segment. Right, Paul. Paul Peterson. Okay. He was on the Donna Reed show. Donna right. Reed show. And after the, you know, and we exchanged some stories and we realized we had a common background. There was a tick going on that no one but us understood. And now Geraldo wants to talk to Jay. The Geraldo Rivera. The Geraldo Rivera in New York. And Jay won't go. He said, book Jeannie Russell. She'll tell you anything you need to know. <laughs> so... They they called me and I said, well, yeah, you know, because that's how I got in show business. And the first time they knocked on our door, right. you know, so anything to do with show business was, you know, in my blood, in my heartbeat. So I did Geraldo. And on that show, I met several generations of child actors like Danny Bonaducci, Susan Olson, Danielle Brisbois from um, Archie's Place and Johnny Whitaker. Mm hmm. And we talked and we we could tell the same story. Yeah. But, but every one of those child actors, actresses, they all had the same type of story of what the door, of the door being slammed in their face or being taken advantage of. Yeah, I think Johnny called the show business eats their young, you <laughs> know, <laughs> and, uh, they just because, you know, they want the hot commodity that walks through the door. At that point, they were no longer taking the time to to transition like they let Elizabeth Taylor and Natalie Wood do, you know, <clears throat> who were beauties. But they they were aware that they didn't want to overexpose them because of what happened to Shirley Temple when she tried to work through her right. adolescence. Mm -hmm. and, they and lost her. But let me ask you that. Again, I, I can't get over the rejection part. I mean, Beverly, mm -hmm. you did it. I mean, you were the child actress. I mean, you, you did stuff. And yet, when you got rejected, how did you handle it? As opposed to either crying <laughs> no, I mean, Which either I crying or, or drawing a fit. <clears throat> well, you just innately understand that when you don't get a certain audition, it wasn't meant to be. At least that's what my parents mm -hmm. and my mother would say. You know, you and get a wait. fair amount of jobs and you don't. It's when it gets ultra personal, one on one with the casting director that says, you know, go away. That's mm -hmm. that, well, which should not have happened. That's it, a whole nother OK, story. but again, you talked previously that as a 10 year old, 11 year old, you met Alfred Hitchcock mm -hmm. and he did the interview. And you weren't intimidated by that. I mean, it's the no. Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, you've been with actors. I mean, you see, she'll be the mill as a director. Not intimidated by it. Well, I was too young to really get who he was. To me, he was just the director. I didn't, I didn't compute in my head right. that he was an iconic, you know, famous director. And yeah, but when you get rejected. Like what Jeannie said, it was just, oh, it's just, that's well, the way it, it is. Yeah. No, well, I went into, at that time, at the final time, I went into a huge depression because, the, you know, the words were, that, well, nothing you did as a child counts. And I didn't understand that, you know. While you were at home sleeping, I was working for Alfred Hitchcock, you know. Correct, yeah. And I was, I was filming a series, and now you're in town, and you're going to tell me how it is. I did, no, none of that computed. And there was no... Um, group. There was no uh, place to go to to have counseling. Okay, but you know and, and on this be, particular subject. Yeah, before we go into that part, mm -hmm. what what I find just remarkable is as you said, they shut the door on you. Mm -hmm. And you said, okay, I'm gonna become a doctor. And you become Mark to Margaret to Dr. Russell, mm -hmm. which I just think it's 
remarkable. Have, have people just commented, or am I the only one that find it so fascinating? <laughs> and I have to add that she is a very well-known, respected chiropractor. Oh, extremely. Years, sweetie. No, you no, are. I mean, I mean, extremely. But the idea of doing that and then completely different to a chiropractor. Did you enjoy being a doctor? I did. I did because I wanted to be a chiropractor because, number one, it had helped me as a child. It had turned my health around. Right. And... Um, also, for all the dance that I had done, the dance training, mm -hmm. you put me at a desk and I will eat and I'll smoke and I'll drink coffee and I'll go to sleep. <laughs> right? and so I wanted to move around and it just had all the magic ingredients, you know, that I could carry with me. Plus, I had to run the show. At one point, Entertainment Tonight came to my office to interview me and I said, this is the Jeannie Russell show. Yeah. You know, it ends when, when I say it does. As soon as I said it, I wish I could have sucked it back because, of course, that bite went out, you know, yeah. all over the place. But that was the truth of it. I thought, you know. OK. And now let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. you became the national chair of the Screen Actors Guild Young Performers Committee. How did that come about? From the talk shows. We were all telling the same stories and the younger ones wanted to talk to us and um I thought, you know what? There needs to be a place where the business can either debrief you, you know, and smooth some emotional stuff out for you. Um, this was broiling around in my head. Now, Paul Peterson was a, a, a barn burner. He'd storm into the the, um, uh, the board meetings at SAG, and he'd clear the room. People would walk out on him. Was he was he nasty? Was he belligerent? He was emotional. Emotional. But he was right. And Barry Gordon, who was a child actor from New York, a former child actor from New York, a very fine one, um, worked with Jason Robards in a play. I can't remember the name. Yeah. Anyway, um, he said to Paul, he said, Paul, you are right. There are things going on that need to be fixed. But you need to bring me a chair for this committee that will not clear the room, who can sit down and have an unemotional conversation and explain issues the child actors face. So just like before when show business knocked, I'm sitting at home watching TV and Paul calls and he said, Jeannie, you want to be the national chair of the Young Performers Committee? There's a big untapped fund that no one's, that the Guild has not used. We can put on a conference. We can bring this to attention. We can invite former child actors to come to it and speak and tell their experience. And it took us uh, over a year of going through the guild. Barry uh, rem remembered me. Okay. And I gave him a picture of when we were all kids. He was yeah. the tallest one in the group, and he turned out to be a short man. But um, after a year of going through the bureaucratic process, national board means we were tied in with after. First, we had to get LA pro approval. Then we had to go teleconference with New York's committee to get their approval. And they, they didn't know. They, they may have trouble in New York. And we needed to be in the same room, you know, and that's the way this this worked. And we got funding, $120,000 to have this national convention, the first ever. We brought in people from New York. We brought in entertainment lawyers, teachers, former child actors, the whole cast of um, Father Knows Best was there. Was it, was it something that the industry never thought about or they didn't realize it? When it was just one person coming there. They, they blew it off, okay? Diana Sarah Carey, who was baby Peggy before mm -hmm. Shirley Temple, mm -hmm. she came to the Guild years later because she couldn't transition either. And she'd made millions, you know, before Shirley Temple did. And they, they said, you got to give us a name of a psychologist who I can talk to. And they blew it off. But now you had numbers. You had a ballooning generation of highly recognizable child stars. Sure. And um, they were fairly articulate, okay? <laughs> and somehow I was the one who could keep calm, okay? And um, when New York came to, to vote on this conference thing, he said, we don't have problems in New York. I said, let's have dinner. And I sat down with the chair in New York. We had like a three hour dinner. And I told her that Jay did not own the money he, he earned. And he was on a stipend. So well, let me ask you, in the, in the few minutes we have left, again, we haven't even touched the surface. We have to have her back again. Oh, positively. <laughs> the, what was the first change that went on? The first change was going to be the easiest one. Okay, after this conference, staff was blown away, legal was blown away, they were on our side. 
because they realized they were representing full tariff members that um, were not didn't own their money. So that penny dropped. The first thing we started with the easiest one was that the studio nurses blew the whistle that they were using premature infants on mm -hmm. sound stages to uh, play newborn babies. Oh, you had to be two weeks old to work in California. That was not good enough. Okay, they were ca calling out low birth weight infants, which means preemie, underdeveloped mm -hmm. lungs, whatever. They slathered them with cream cheese. So that was the easier one to you know get them to wake up and change. The code, okay. Okay, so then wait, we can do, again, we're over the limit right now in terms mm -hmm. of time, if we can have you back again. Because I gotta tell you, I, what I find more fascinating, and I'm sure the audience will mm -hmm. too, is they don't think about it. They don't think about mm -hmm. it as a child, no. you know, and then, oh, they just disappeared. And well, like for an infant to be under the hot lights and all that. A premature infant, by yeah. definition, I, yeah, and the is, parents is, would is allow high that. risk. Right. And no one was paying attention to this stuff. And um, a girlfriend of mine was the medical advisor on, um, here we go, the difficult, yeah. the crotchety old doctor, starts with an H on his television series. Anyway, this is very embarrassing. Oh, my yes. Okay. And they were using mannequins. And she said, my friend Jeannie, she was the, t the medical advisor. She's a nurse. My friend Jeannie helped, you know, that not be a premature infant. Um, okay. We will have, again, I would love to have you back. I mean, just got a million. That's not even does. a big one. That's not even the transition I issue. Mean, so, I mean, again, we're literally out of time over this. So, I thank you again for being here. Yes, Beverly, thank you. as always. Well, it's my pleasure. I, and I'm so embarrassed. I can't remember the name no, of the well, you know, no, it's just we, all, we all have those. No, we have those too yeah. because <laughs> I forget her name and she forgets mine. That's why we get along. <laughs> the doctor so. that we limped. forget our own name. Yeah. Out here. The doctor that limped, you just quashed it, but you can diagnose anything. That sounds like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he was, like doctor. <laughs> he was wonderful. Wait, we're going we're gonna to have you back. Okay. I would like to describe, just to go into those details more than anything else, if I may. Mm -hmm. Again, I apologize for going over on the time, but we haven't even touched the surface. So, well, it was like when the tickets, when the, the ticket woman called me stupid. Yeah, I, it was like a dare. I can make these people understand this. I know I can. Yeah, I know I can. So I went heart to heart with them. You know, and and, and again, I, as I mentioned to you before, and I'll tell you, I'm just fascinated by your career <laughs> and what you, you. did. Yeah. Anyway, you. I thank you again for letting thank me be you, here. Dan. We're going to have you back on. Uh, this is Dan Roberts for Hollywood Memories saying we will see you again next time. <laughs> well, see Hopefully you too, I can Jeannie. talk. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks you both very much. Thank you.